Hey everybody, welcome to Mammoth Interactive's YouTube channel. First of all, I want to thank you for watching this video. And remember that this channel doesn't do Patreon, instead we sell our digital courses down below. And every single dollar that we get from the products you buy below goes into making more content. The best way to help out this channel and Mammoth Interactive is to subscribe to Mammoth Interactive's huge library of content. Get thousands of hours and hundreds of courses for a low, low price down below. We have a monthly option and a yearly option. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you in the video. All right, welcome back. So right now we have uh, something that works, and we have a, a little laser. It shoots out the, uh, the the laser gun, and I think it looks pretty good uh, for now. Uh, but let's actually have it destroy something. Now, in order to do this, it, it was a little bit more complicated than I thought it would be, but let's go ahead and let's figure out exactly what we need to do. So the first things first is you technically can have the beam itself do something, but then you get into this weird situation where, for example, if you're shooting the beam and then you move it over, the side of the beam, not necessarily the end of the beam, will interact with it. So you can kind of like sweep things up. Now, this this actually, you know, if you're thinking about a real world laser, would it be the impact of the laser or the actual beam itself? It's kind of like if you have like some water, um, you know, for example, like a, a stream of water and you put your finger in the middle, it's going to it's going to spray everywhere. But I think for the game purposes, it'd be better if it was the point of impact. It would just be a little bit better. It, kind of, if you're kind of thinking about it, you know, if you were shooting a laser and a mosquito landed on the laser, it would, well, the mosquito would blow up, right? So I'm thinking that, you know, just for gameplay, it seems like if you're going to hit something, uh, it should be at the impact point, okay? So, so with going with that, like, there's many ways to do things. Going with the impact point, that's what we're going to do. So the first things first is let's hop back to the content here, and what we're going to do is we're going to add a blueprint actor, and in this actor, we're going to call this a laser collision, okay? And we're going to use an actual primitive to be the collision here. So let's go ahead, let's add in a cube. And we could probably just make it a cube, but maybe this is a little too big. Um, but I am actually going to, um, you know, which one should we scale? I think we should scale the y-axis. So we, we, we want this to be a fairly thin, and I'm going to make this you know, smaller here. Let's just make it 0.5 and 0.5, okay? And then we can make that, I think we could probably make it white. So anything that's going to touch this is essentially going to, um, uh, is essentially going to be destroyed, okay? So that's where we're going with it. So how do we do that? Well, this is actually pretty simple. So let's go ahead and let's, at the end of this, let's spawn actor from class and the class we're going to spawn of course is laser collision right and then the spawn transform luckily we have this on our in uh, break point where we're going to say impact point it's going to do a little conversion eh, it doesn't really matter um it, it technically you know technically we could do you know i i tested this out but let's just take a look at this here okay and so as you can see it ends up with a little square and in retrospect that's way too small so let's let's bring that back to one and one but we do want this to be fairly thin we don't want this to be a cube and i think that looks pretty good um and you know what actually a cube might uh you know work a bit better uh let's see yeah and I, that's a little big but you know you can see that the impact point is there now there's a couple things that we're going to do um, that could be its, its own game uh, in its own right. But let's just, you know, I'm just completely improvising at this point here. And I'm just going to do the trace end. Okay, so the impact point is one, but the trace end, yeah, okay, it doesn't work. Good. So impact point is what we need to do. Okay, nevertheless. Okay, so there we go. Now there's a couple things you can see that uh, there's collisions. We don't want that. So let's hop into laser collision and then type in collision. And then you see it's a block all, we want no collision. Okay, so let's do that here. And that way, you know, we basically have a cube and anything within that cube, you know, it's going to, let's say, uh, die here. But 
let's hop into this laser collision here. And um, in this here, we're going to add in an event begin play. I always delete the beginning parts, but that doesn't really matter here. We're going to add in a delay and make this 0.5. And you're going to see what why I'm doing this in a second. I'm going to destroy actor. Destroy actor. Okay, so let's so just go ahead and play it here. And so all this is doing is that when you hit something, it's going to exist for a brief period of time, and anything within that uh, is going to die. Okay, there we go. There we go. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, so that's so you can see that's kind of step one out of step. So actually, that's step two out of step three. The, the other thing we need to do is we need to hold it down. And if I hold it down, you notice that it only spawns once. Well, it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. And in order to make this work, we need to kind of change the way that we this input action fire works. And in order to do that, we need to add in a timer. Okay, so we're going to do set timer by event. All right, and then we're going to okay. So I'm actually going to delete this here, and then um, in here we're going to add a custom event, and we're just going to say fire constantly. Okay, we'll just call it that. It doesn't really matter at this point here. And we're going to drag this over here. Now, there's a couple. Now, I purposely got rid of this for a second here um, because I'm going to kind of show you how it works. And basically, we can make this 0.1. I think that looks pretty good. And then if we run this here, let's see. It still doesn't quite work the way we want it to. Um, but you'll also notice, um, you'll also notice here that. Um, that basically, if I kind of click, well, it's still it's still kind of working here, um, but we, but um, we need to um, add in this event handle, and it says, and if I type in clear, we don't hook it up that we hook it up to this. So basically, we need to clear this. Ah, that's what's the, uh, missing here. Okay, so let me undo this for a second here and just delete that here. So you have to push the looping in, and watch what happens when I push the looping. When I release it. It just stops, like, and I and I can click it again and again and again, but it doesn't stop. And in order to do that, we need to clear this event handle, but we need to hook it up to the release. So the pressed fire is going to not only set the laser back, but it's also going to clear this event here because this timer is saying whatever this event is, do this amount of time. In this case, 0.1 seconds looping. And that way, we now have this working the way we want it to. But there's a bit of a problem. And I'm just going to show you, uh, if I put this to one second, the problem becomes very evident. Right? I have to hold it down for one second before it actually fires. That's not good. So let's go ahead and let's hook this up here. Okay, now I know I purposely did that here. But you can see here that it starts, whenever I click it, we have an original uh, original loop here. So you have to do that in order for the loop to work. Okay, so let's go ahead. Let's move it here. And now you can kind of see that like the the phaser impact is working. Okay, and that's look or the laser impact here. Now that's actually looking not so bad. But I think if we change that to 0 0.05, it might be a little bit more because you want this to basically say, you know, um, and actually the the box is maybe a bit too big. So let's hop back in here. And of course, this is the way game development works, by the way. Um, you know, when you um, when you do this here, you might think it's too much or too little. All right, so let's maybe drag that down to 0.85. You know, and again, there we go. That's probably a little better, right? And then the delay on this might be a bit too much too, so maybe the 0.2 was better to begin with. So basically, yeah, I mean, I think that's looking pretty good. You know, anything within that is going to virtually die. It might be a bit too much. Now, of course, when you're building something, you want to make sure it works, and then you tweak um, for perfection later. In theory, you want to, when you're making a game, you want to make sure that you're going from building it and having it work, and then tweaking to perfection later, okay? So... One last thing before we go, let's make this material a little bit different here. Let's make it emissive. Um, and in order to do that, we need to multiply. Okay, and then we're going to drag that right into the emissive color. And then within here, 
we're going to make that 100. Okay. And while I'm at it here, let's uh, add in this nice deep red color. Or, you know, let's make it purple. There we go. Make it a nice deep purple. Push OK. And we'll wait a couple seconds for it to, to work here. But the, the emissive um, will work. All right, so let's save that here. And for some reason, I guess purple isn't working, but nevertheless, um, we can go play it here. And now it looks more like a laser beam. I always like white laser beams, even though. Um, so let's change that to a different color, maybe red. And let's see if that works. I don't know why it would not work. I mean, it worked out for the most part. Let's uh, take a look at that here. And that's weird. Why that's not working, I have no idea. But nevertheless, uh, I'm just going to keep it white for the time being here. And um, the parameters, yeah. Oh, that's why. That's why. You need to drag in that. There we go. So let's, let's bring that back to purple. Nice deep purple. OK. Yeah, so I knew there was something a little bit off. Although white doesn't look so bad either. There we go. So we have a nice purple color. Let's go ahead and save that here. And, you know, if you were, there we go. We have a nice kind of purple beam here. You can make it whatever you want here. So there we go. Perfect. All right. See you in the next tutorial.